Hi, and welcome to the last video in our series here on markups, markdowns, and breakeven. Uh, this one will be about uh, the breakeven point. And as always, if you don't understand something, pause the video, rewind it, watch it as many times as you need. And if you don't understand something, feel free to telephone an instructor or you know email them, and we'll help you go over it. Right? Uh, this one here is definitely going to be a little bit more difficult because there's a lot more moving parts and when you're talking about a break-even point it's not you know I, I've, al I've always been stressing it's about understanding and not memorization okay and in this you can memorize but depending upon how the information is given to you you're not gonna get it if you memorize one thing you know in a book you're going to be shown this and you're going to be shown an example and that's one example they're gonna give you homework problems if you're doing your homework problems you'll have you know when you do the first homework problem it's gonna be different from the example in the book and you'll figure out you know you'll be see what the answer is and you'll kinda of like go okay and then you'll do the next problem kinda of like go okay but remember you memorized one thing the first time instead of understanding so now when you're given a problem that you you know that a homework problem or if it's in the real world and you're being just given data given information if you go back into the book and you try to follow that particular example you're not gonna get it because the information is going to be presented in different ways many different ways and this here's a, a little bit more of a complicated example of that so it's again about understanding an application not memorization and in order to do that, let's discuss what break-even is. All right, on this uh, on this frame, um, I have the selling price less variable costs gives you contribution margin. And then you take your fixed costs, and that gives you a profit and loss. What is this? All right, what is all of this? All of this really is what you find on an income statement. Right, it's one of your financial statements. Right. On an income statement, um, you have revenues, okay, less your costs, and you get a contribution margin, a gross profit. Notice I said contribution margin, okay, or gross profit. Two different terms that mean the same exact thing okay so depending upon how the data is given to you you know it might have said you might be getting the information selling price less variable cost and or it might say this is what your gross profit is well if you don't know that gross profit is a contribution margin which make is made up of your selling price less your variable costs you're dead in the water because you're looking in the book and you're trying to find gross profit when it actually says contribution margin Okay. All right, so to give an example, let's say, um, and let's just use the hospitality industry. Right? They work on a twenty, about a twenty-five to thirty percent markup on uh, their costs. So when you know they sell, um, you know, sell a plate of food and keep numbers simple. Let's say. Um, the plate of food costs hundred dollars I know that's high let's call it fine dining right and let's say it's lobster okay um, lobster the price varies you know from day to day and we used this as an example before but depending upon the seasonality lobster can be you know inexpensive or can be real expensive okay it all depends upon that time of year when they're, they're harvesting it okay when they're harvesting and there's a lot the price of lobster goes down but when it's you know not that time of year they don't catch as much the price goes up that's a variable cost there is no one set cost for the lobster so in this example here right let's just say that our lobster costs seventy five dollars okay that gives us a gross profit or a contribution margin of twenty five dollars okay? this is how much we pay you know as the business, they pay seventy-five dollars for the lobster. They turn around and sell it to you for hundred. You wouldn't pay three hundred dollars for a plate of uh, of lobster, 
Okay, so then I realize that this these numbers are a little out of line, but it's just to give you the idea here. So you you know you were being sold the plate of food for a hundred. Your cost was seventy five on it, which means you have twenty five dollars in profit. That's your contribution margin. That's your gross profit. From that, you have to take out all of the rest of your expenses in the business, less your fixed cost. Fixed costs are things like your rent. You know, um, when you pay a thousand dollars a month for rent, okay, that's a fixed cost. Right? So out of this twenty-five, you're going to take out all of the rest of those fi those fixed costs, and that leaves you with your profit or loss. Okay, ten, fifteen dollars, whatever it is, right? This is what uh, you find on your income statement. Okay, revenues, less your cost of goods sold, gives you a gross profit or gross margin, contribution margin, less a fixed, co less all of your other costs. Okay, which would then give you your profit or loss. So, from a break-even perspective. I have a selling price, you know, a hundred dollars, you know, for that plate of food. Less my variable costs, seventy-five dollars, gives me a contribution margin, twenty-five dollars. Less my fixed costs, whatever they might be. Let's make them fifteen. That means the profit on that plate of food would be ten dollars. Okay. Understand what that is right now. That's not calculating break-even. That's just the different components that you're going to need in order to be able to do the break-even analysis. And you can kind of remember and understand that if you already understand what's on an income statement. Same kind of thing. Okay. All right. So now let's move on. Okay. In order to calculate the break-even point, right? Yeah, there's two formulas here. Um, in order to calculate the break-even point, I have fixed costs over my contribution margin. Okay. Now, from the last slide, you know, if I had my fixed costs were 10 over my contribution margin of 25, okay, that would give me whatever. Okay, I'm not calculating it out, but that would give me my break-even point. Now. That's relatively simple to remember, and yeah, you can you can memorize that. But notice um, that my contribution margin, if I was given twenty-five dollars as contribution margin, I would use this formula. But I here's a here's a case where you have a formula within a formula. Okay, think about what makes up contribution margin. The contribution margin is the selling price less my variable cost. So if I was given information that oh, I had a selling price of 100 and my variable cost was 75 and my fixed costs were 10 and I was told calculate my break even point, I can't use this formula, right? I can't use it because why? I'm being given a contribution margin and in my data I was not told what my contribution margin was. I wasn't told that my contribution margin was 25. Okay. I need to calculate my contribution margin. So therefore, I have to recognize in the information that I'm given what data I need in order to calculate that contribution margin. Now granted, I could have been given the information. I have uh, $100 um, of a selling price, $75 of variable costs, $25 of a contribution margin, and $10 of uh, fixed cost. Yeah, I have a complete set of data there, and I'd be able to just immediately go, okay, my fixed cost here is 10, and my contribution margin is 25, and I get whatever I need. But let's just say instead I'm given 100, um, 75, and the 10, like up here. Okay. You know, I'm not being given the contribution margin. And if I quickly look and open up in the book and I see break even point, okay, and I I see this formula fixed cost over contribution margin, if I'm just gonna say, okay, my fixed costs are seventy-five and 
uh, my contribution margin, I, I don't know, let me try 10, right? Wrong. Oh, let me try 100. Wrong. Okay, you have to be able to realize that you have this here formula within the formula, right? You have to be able to realize that oh, my contribution margin is made up of my selling price less my variable cost. Right? So now I can go and I can take the 100, I'm sorry, the 10, less my selling price of 100, minus my variable cost of 75, which is now 10 over 25, and get the right answer, just like we did up here. Okay? So, uh, again, you know, memorization. If I'm memorizing two different things here, that's fine if you can memorize it. If you're, if this is a closed book and you're sitting in a classroom or you're in the real world and you don't have the book, okay, or, you know, and you need to, you know, do this. If you can remember, you memorize the two different things, yeah, you have to be able to uh, figure out, you know, what these different parts are. Um, and if you remember the two, the two formulas, that's just great. But if you can go back and if if you can understand and go back and think about okay here's what my income statement would look like ah and this is you know what i use you know selling price variable cost fixed contribution margin gross profit fixed costs if you can understand those relationships now you can sit down and say okay you know what do i need in order to be able to solve this problem remember i'm 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 even to even take this a step further. I'm just saying, okay, well here's my uh, here's my selling price is hundred dollars. Okay, here's my variable cost of of seventy five. I'm just telling you that the variable cost is seventy five. What if the problem was even more complicated? It, you know, and it said, uh, well you have a cost for this, you have a cost for this, you have a cost for this. Right, and that's let's say this cost is 25, and this cost is 30, and this cost is uh, 20. Okay, and you're told that your fixed cost is 10. Would you be able to recognize that all of this is your variable cost? You know, not I've just given you a whole bunch more data. I didn't give it to you in just one nice, neat little package that said my variable cost is 75. You were given the information from you know the people that you work with, and they said, "Oh well, this is this. You know, this is 25. This is 30. This is 20." You know, they didn't they didn't just go and do all the math for you, and they didn't figure it all out and say, "Oh yeah, our variable cost is is 75." They give it to you in a, in a much much more different fashion. So it's up to you to be able to understand and recognize the different parts and be able to work with it. Yeah, I'm not saying that there isn't a certain amount of memorization. Sure, it helps to memorize. I mean, I memorize what uh, the, what's on an income statement. I'm able to translate that over into the parts that I need to be able to work with the break-even point. And from the break-even, you know, from that, I'm able to sit and think about the perspective of, okay, um, I have one cost, which is my fixed costs over my contribution margin, right? Yeah, I'm kind of like memorizing that, but I can't rely upon that one formula. I have to understand everything that's involved, that my contribution margin is my selling price less my variable cost. And if I understand that, however I get the data, and I think in terms of those specific concepts, what is the fixed cost? And the fixed cost is, you know, Something that isn't going to change is the cost. That's my rent. What is my variable cost? Oh, well, my cost of goods sold on my lobster can be $17 today a pound. Tomorrow it could be $22 a pound. Okay. Does that, you know, and that's just talking about lobster. But what if I had, you know, and that's one item with one cost. I can say that's my variable cost. But if I, what if I had something that was being manufactured, and let's say I have um, aluminum parts and copper parts, and you know circuit boards and the price of aluminum and copper change every day also which would change the cost of that particular item uh, well these are the, you know this is just extra information that 
would would change and I'd have to be able to use that in order to figure out what my variable cost is so um, yeah you know on the surface if you just look and you try to say okay I'm gonna memorize this that's fine but just realize that here you have a formula within a formula okay and you have to really look at whatever information you're given and realize what the different parts are because what the information you're going to be given can be very very varied there is no one size fits all you're not going to get a problem where you can go back in the book and look at the example and follow it specifically if you do a high percentage of the time you're going to get it wrong okay that's why you're given many many different homework problems and are you going to memorize all of the homework problems and even if you didn't memorize all of the homework problems we can still you can still get another problem that isn't exactly like one of those homework problems but it's still based upon the same concept and idea okay so that's break even I uh, hope I didn't confuse you but you know you're getting into this you know into an area where yeah you, you have to understand and apply you have to be able to think you, you don't um, you know just memorize and repeat okay so if you have any you know watch the video again um, you know pause read in the book and if you still have any additional questions feel free to telephone and speak with an instructor or you know contact us via email and we'll try to go over it so that you do understand it but if you say you understand it and you do go to apply it realize that the application can be different from problem to problem no one size fits all okay all right, hope that helps, and thanks, and have a great day, okay?